In this video, we are going to be talking about what is, in my opinion, the three most important endgame checkmates that you need to know. Queen and King versus King checkmate, Rook and King versus King checkmate, and Two Rooks and King versus King checkmate. But before I get into the video, please like and subscribe. I release weekly content and you wouldn't want to miss out. Anyways, enjoy the video. Let's start with the Queen and King versus King checkmate. This is one of the easiest checkmates and only requires four steps to win the game. If we take a look at the starting position, we have our white queen on d1, black king on e5, and the white king on e1. The first step to achieving this checkmate is to put our white queen in position. It should be attacking the black king just like a knight would in an L shape. In this case, the correct move is queen to d3. You can see that it is attacking the black king in an L shape. And if we imagine this queen as a knight, it would be checking the enemy king. The second step is to simply follow the enemy king's moves with our own, our own queen. So picture this. The enemy king moves back, it's going up, we also want to move up. If the enemy king moves to the right and down, we also want to move to, to the right and down. The enemy king moves to the right and up, we also want to move to the right and up. And we keep doing this until the enemy king only has two places to go, corner and this other square. Note that if they do play king here, we do not want to play queen here because that is stalemate. So now that we have the enemy king trapped, there's only two places where it can go. It can go there and back, over and over again. This leads us to the third step in this checkmate, which is to bring our own king all the way up the board. Remember, the enemy king can only move back and forth, so we can take as much time as we want to slowly bring our king in. So, we see king h8, slowly bring our king in, king h7, king f3, king h8, king f4, king h7, king f5, king h8, king f6, king h7, and king f7. Now, after king h8, there are many ways to finish off the game. We can see that the black king is completely trapped in the corner and our pieces are closing it. As I mentioned before, there are many ways to checkmate. We play queen h4, queen h5, queen h6, queen g7, and queen to g8. All of these lead to an instantaneous checkmate in one. Note that you want to avoid stalemates such as queen to g6 you want to win the game with a checkmate rather than drawing with a stalemate this is the final step in this checkmate which is to simply finish off the game queen to g7 you can see the black king is completely trapped in the corner with our pieces closed in this is the queen and king versus king checkmate very common you will see in your games a lot Remember, there are four steps to this mate, getting our queen into position, following the enemy king with our queen, bringing our king up, and then finishing the game with the checkmate. The second position that we will take a look at is the king and two rooks against king checkmate, also referred to as rook checkmate, or simply ladder mate. This checkmate is probably the easiest, there's only two steps to win the game, and it is also very common, so it's important that you understand this checkmate completely, because it, it'll apply to many of your games. The first step in this checkmate is to restrict the enemy king. In this case, we're playing as white and looking to checkmate black. So we want to play either of these rooks to the fourth rank cutting off the enemy king and restricting it 
all the way back. If they move, they're gonna be king sideways. We play check, restricting it even further to the sixth, seventh, or eighth ranks. If he moves back, we simply check again, restricting it to the seventh or eighth rank. Back, we go check, restricting it to the final eighth rank. Goes back, we move the other rook for checkmate. As I mentioned earlier, this checkmate pattern is very simple. It's very easy. We simply just alternate our rooks and slowly move them up the board until the enemy king is checkmated. Note that here, if they play king to c8, we cannot play rook to a8 because king takes b7. So we simply want to slide this rook, which is under attack, all the way down. And now we're threatening rook to a8 checkmate. If they guard that threat with king to b7, we slide the other rook all the way down here. Remember that the, the rooks always want to be on different files. See this on the G file, this on the H file. That way they both have maximum mobility. And now rook to g8 is an unstoppable checkmate threat. We moved our rooks way away from the enemy king. And now no matter if the enemy king plays king to a8 or king to c8, this is checkmate. This checkmate is very important because it applies to a lot of your games. It's very common. You'll see it almost pretty much one in 10 games. And it is very important, but it's also fairly easy to learn. And that concludes our two rook and king versus king checkmate. The final checkmate that we will be looking at for this video is the one rook and king versus king checkmate. This is probably the hardest of all that we've discussed so far. However, it is very common, so it is important that you know this for your own games. This rook endgame is very similar to the other one that we discussed earlier with the two rooks. But in this case, we have to use our own king and slowly push the enemy king back. Just like the other two, we will be doing white to move and checkmating black. Similar to the other rook end game, we want to start by playing rook to the fourth rank, restricting the king to the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth ranks. The king can move anywhere if they move sideways, for example. We slowly bring our king in until the kings meet opposition just like this. Note that if they do move there, like here, attacking your rook, you just want to slide your own rook all the way down to the other side until there is opposition and you can check forcing the king back. We want to continue to get opposition with the kings, put them aligned like this. And note that if they do move to your rook, you just want to slide over like this, make it third turn, force them to move into the opposition rather than chasing the enemy king. See over, 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 and back. And finally, we have achieved opposition. We can simply slide our rook and restrict it to the seventh or eighth ranks. Note that if you do try and match opposition like this, it must be their turn. They must walk into the opposition of kings because like this, if they move sideways and we try to do the same, they'll simply move back and nothing is achieved. So we want to simply find a waiting move to make it their turn. Just slide a rook over as long as it remains along the file it'll be fine. Again, keep moving away from the opposition, but this time it's their turn. They must walk into these, this king alignment till the brook finally slides back. 
and they're restricted to the final rank. You see, if we go here, we move, and remember that if we try and create the opposition by sliding over, they can simply slide back, going back and forth endlessly. So if we want to find a waiting move, we simply move our rook, and now we can see that they are forced in the end to get into this opposition. But in this time, it is our turn, and we can simply play rook to a8 checkmate. This is probably the hardest checkmate of all that we've talked about so far, but it is just as important. It's very similar to the two rook and king versus king checkmate. However, in this case, we want to use our king to restrict and slowly move the enemy king back until it is forced to the final rank where you will deliver the checkmate. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.